Okay, this is the second of a series of videos that I'm doing on the HIV um, virus, so the human immunodeficiency virus. In this video, I'm largely just going to focus on the viral replication cycle, um, really explaining what it is and how it works. This is one I actually suggest students know. There are a whole bunch of antiretroviral therapy drugs um, that our patients go on. Um, antiretroviral therapy, sometimes referred to as CART, um, which is combined antiretroviral therapy or ART for antiretroviral therapy or antiretrovirals. There's all sorts of different acronyms, but really what it means is that you've got a cocktail of drugs that are working together at different stages in the virus's life cycle to inhibit its um, effectivity, okay? Um, when I think of the viral life cycle, I like to break it up into stages um, like any other viral life cycle and then break down where I think it could be stopped, okay? Um, the virus genome itself consists of two identical copies of the RNA genome, okay? And the RNA genome is found within a nucleocapsid in the core of the enveloped virus, okay? So you have a couple of different steps right there um, to kind of think of as to how we could potentially um, inhibit this structure of virus. Um, the RNA is protected by a capsid structure, this nucleocapsid, and that's where you're going to find the HIV P24, which is a protein you may hear me talk about at other points um, in these videos, specifically when we get to um, diagnostic testing, okay? All right, I grabbed this picture, I think, from the CDC. I'm going to slightly renumber things. So um, the first number I'm actually going to have is attachment. So remember, initially, the virus is going to attach to two receptors. The first one is CD4, and that's going to be done. Um, it's going to be bound by GP120. And then there's going to be a co-receptor that also binds to GP120. Um, early in infection, it's M-tropic, and it'll be CCR5. Later, it's T-tropic and will be CXCR4. Um, this is actually the stage where the attachment inhibitor antiretroviral um, drug Maraviroc works. Um, this one has not actually been used a ton recently. It really only works to block the GP120 CCR5 binding. So if you have any RX4 virus at all, this will not be an effective um, antiretroviral. So it really only works in M-tropic virus, okay? So we have one attachment and that uses um, Marav, that can be inhibited by Maravroc. So then our second step is actually um, fusion over here. Um, so fusion and penetration. So binding of both co-receptors actually triggers kind of a conformational change, which is shown here in GP120 and GP40. And that actually allows fusion of the viral and cellular membranes, which is kind of what's being shown here, okay? Um, following fusion, the capsid is going to enter the cytoplasm, um, and that's when actually the whole thing really kicks off, all right? So at this point, we're going to move into reverse transcriptase, okay, or reverse transcription. Reverse transcription is largely going to occur in the cell's cytoplasm. Um, in, during reverse transcription, the RT, which is the reverse transcriptase, which is encoded by the pole gene, um, in the HIV um, genome. Basically, it uses um, tRNA in the, virion, in the virion as a primer, and it synthesizes a complementary negative stranded DNA, which is basically just cDNA. It also degrades the positive sense RNA strand and synthesizes the corresponding DNA positive sense strand. So basically, we're going from our viral RNA, we've made our, we've got a reverse transcriptase, it's going to synthesize a um, complementary viral DNA. It's going to get rid of the RNA and then make another DNA. So now we have a nice double-stranded viral DNA um, component. As I mentioned before, the RT is the major target for antiretroviral therapy. So um, the RT is actually inhibited by two different classes of drugs, the NRTIs and the NNRTIs. 
the NRTIs inhibit reverse transcriptase using analogs of the natural ATGC nucleotides that are normally used by the reverse transcriptase to build the DNA strands. They are competitive inhibitors. They competitively inhibit the reverse transcriptase. So examples of the NRTIs would be things like abacavir, emtricitabine, and tenofovir. Tenofovir being a very commonly used antiretroviral currently. The NNRTIs are the non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors. They inhibit reverse transcriptase by binding directly to the reverse transcriptase enzyme itself. They're not integrated into the DNA strand. So examples of this one actually include things like afavirenz, nevirapine, and deliviridine. Um, okay, so the other thing I'll mention about the RT at this point is that the RT makes a lot of mistakes. It's very, very, very error prone. And this is actually a really big problem. Um, there is approximately one error per every 200 bases, or approximately five errors per genome made by the RT. This would be the equivalent of me basically making an error on every single slide in every single YouTube video I ever make, or um, at least one typo on every page of every note I've ever written. But here's the kicker. It's not just me making a mistake on you know one video right? It's I make a mistake on that video and each viewer gets a different mistake. So it's it's that's how um, error prone this is. This genetic instability is actually what dictates the generation of new strains of the virus during a person's disease. It also is kind of a um, benefit to the virus because it provides for immune evasion. It means that it's constantly making new antigens. And if we're constantly making new antigens, our immune responses just can't keep up. Okay, so one of the jobs, obviously, of the RT is to set up for integration, right? Because, so we had attachment over here. Ooh, what happened? I'm, that marker is very thick now. So we had attachment, then we had fusion, um, then we had RNA um, reverse transcriptase, and now we're going to integrate. So when we made our reverse transcriptase, we made this DNA, and now it's going to go into the nucleus, okay? Um, integration of e HIV DNA basically occurs when the cDNA of the HIV is able to enter the nucleus. Now, unlike other retroviruses, HIV DNA can actually enter through nuclear pores. It doesn't actually need the cell to be replicating. Um, the cDNA is then spliced into the host chromosome by um, integrase. That's the enzyme. The integrase basically makes a little cut and then pops your um, HIV cDNA in. Now it's in that cell forever. As long as that cell replicates, it's going to replicate some HIV as well. Um, the cDNA can remain in the nucleus and cytoplasm in a non-integrated form as well. Um, you can also just see like a circular um, non-integrated cDNA version just hanging out um, until it gets a chance basically to be integrated. Um, and that is another way that it can kind of stay in there until the cell is activated to replicate. Um, the integrase is another um, target for antiretroviral therapies. The integrase inhibitors work directly on the enzyme and inhibit the transfer of this proviral DNA, this um, circular DNA, into the host genome. Um, examples of these would be dolutegravir, um, that's one that's pretty um, common, as well as raltegravir. Okay, so now we move into transcription. Earlier we had reverse transcription, now we have transcription. So once the virus has been integrated, now it's going to kind of follow the same cycle that normal, you know, cell replication would follow, um, where the viral DNA provirus is transcribed as a cellular gene by the host like any other. So an RNA polymerase II um, is basically used to replicate it. That's a host RNA polymerase II. Transcription of the gene basically produces a full length RNA, which for simple retroviruses, not like HIV, would um, lead to the expression of just a couple of proteins. In this case, we're gonna see gag, we're gonna see pole, we're going to see gag pole, which is kind of a combination of the two, obviously. We're going to see env at minimum. Um, 
once it's made all of its proteins that it needs to make, basically those are going to start getting ready to bud out of the cells. So the proteins translated from these genes are synthesized as polyproteins, and they are subsequently cleaved into functional proteins, and I'm not going to go into that process. The viral glycoproteins are post-transcriptionally modified in the endoplasmic reticulum and the Golgi, as you would expect for other host proteins. And then they migrate in the form of trimers to the cell membrane. And you can see there are some other um, kind of markers here. These happen to be host markers, but you would expect that you would also get some of your viral surface proteins, your GP41 and your GP120 uh, showing up at the cell membrane. At this point, once you've got the trimers in and all of the viral proteins on the surface, the association of the two copies of the genome and the cellular transfer RNA molecules leads to budding of the virion. As the virion is enveloped and released from the cell, the viral protease cleaves, gag and pull polyproteins, and that essentially releases the reverse transcriptase and it forms the virion core. And this basically in, ensures that everything is going to be inside the virion. So the virus is relief, released and the viral protease cleaves new polyproteins to create a mature infectious virus. So that is the full life cycle of HIV.